Look at this. I got headphones <laughs> on. I got a mic going. <laughs> Baby. Huh? If only people could see you now. <laughs> hey, no video. We've gone through this before. All right, no all video. right, all right. <laughs> Welcome to This Commerce Life. This is a podcast aimed at small, medium entrepreneurs focused on commerce. I'm Phil, your host, and Kenny, your co-host, will join us as well. And we're going to talk to you about the world of retail and commerce and how things are changing in the world. Is the mic okay? I can't even hear myself. Yeah? No, you're good. You're good. Very nice. Hi. Well, Hi. hello. How are you? Hi. So good. How are you guys? We're good. We're we are good. good. We're Excited good. that you're on. Oh, we're good. Yeah, it feels good to uh, be on here. I just finished a group call in um, our little Facebook vendor group. Okay. All right. That's okay. cool. Yeah. Um, okay. Like the same group that I met last time or different group? Um, so a different group. So our actual maker, like our vendors, we have a private mm -hmm. Facebook group and I do okay. um, a bunch of lives throughout the week on different topics. Okay. Oh, well, that's awesome. cool. Yeah, hello. Hi, how are you? Hi, great. So just so ended that. Colleen, Kenny, here. Kenny, Colleen. Okay, Colleen. Hi. <laughs> Usually we don't introduce each other ourselves that early in the show. Yeah. It just takes about yeah. 10 minutes yeah. before we figure yeah. out who the hell anybody is. Um, Is the show video or are we just capturing voice? Nope. Just, oh, just audio voice. <laughs> no, no, but nobody wants to see <laughs> Phil and I. No. no. These are faces for radio. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Because I'm yeah. just like, do I dress up? <laughs> We, we get that. So the two things that we always get on the show is one yeah. is, you know, do I got to get dressed up? Like, are people going to see my faces? And then the second one is, what do I need to prep? Right. And our answer is nope. And nope. <laughs> yeah. Do I have so any, do, we, do you have uh, any questions you want me to answer? Yeah. yeah. No, it's up no. to you. We'll get into the show. You can answer whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Or, well, or clearly I, I just went with not dressing up and I didn't ask any questions. So that's the best yeah. way to start. Perfect. <laughs> It's perfect. It's all so, good, so for the audience, we have Colleen Imri on. She is what I'm beginning to realize because I, I literally just peeked on LinkedIn and I've known I've known Colleen for oh a couple of years now. Uh, yeah. Four? Yeah. Like if we go back yeah. track. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so a little bit. And um, I'm just realizing um, that you you are a founder by nature, I think. Um, cause you've got lots of things you've started and, and done over the years, but currently you are the founder of the Nooks, right? The Nooks Canada. Yes. Okay. That's, I guess what my LinkedIn says. I should update that. I hear LinkedIn's <laughs> the way to be professional, mature, and <laughs> legit. Oh, sure, really? Sure. Whatever. Oh my God. I've been <laughs> doing everything wrong on LinkedIn then. <laughs> sure, sure. Whatever. Um, so, so what we normally do is. Uh, we'll we'll kind of get you to tell us a bit about you, where you come from, how you got to where you were, and then we'll 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 definitely talk about the nooks and nook start too. If you want to talk about that as well, um, cool. so many cool things going on there. So much going on, and you can do whatever you want. You go back as far as you want. Tell yeah. us what you want. No pressure. Dark depths. No of pressure. Nooking. But we only have an hour or so, so let's not get too deep. We may have yeah. to do a second episode. I don't know, but late night version. Uh, cool. <laughs> well, thanks. And don't please, do, no one bring up my LinkedIn because I'm embarrassed of what they might say. But yeah, I guess, do I start with the intro? I'm Colleen. <laughs> I'm yeah. Colleen, founder, owner, 100% owner of the Nooks Canada. So that's kind of cool. And been been really growing this business to be a turnkey retail platform and online now for handmade small shops. So dating back to, I don't know, 17, um, when I was completely cut off as a young adult <laughs> to, you know, move to Toronto and figure life out and go to art school and figure that out. Um, I really just started the process of discovering what I love, what I love doing and kind of where I want to work in my career path. And so when I realized I don't want to work for anybody ever 
And when I realized that I got to make money, but I want to make fair, good money. And I want to work with a company that knows how to pay properly. I kind of just started lining myself up with the organizations and the opportunities and, and kind of situations to help me get to where I wanted to be. Because ideally I realized I got to work for myself. Mm. So I spent 17, like six years kind of like corporate jumping to all like these these big corporations in retail that I admired, I'm like, Hey, they give free yoga classes. Oh, I get a bag of coffee at the end of the week. Oh, you know, they'll train me and I can advance to a dollar 50 raise in a month. Like I was just kind of bopping around and learning and absorbing elements of these companies that I admired because I was like, I'm going to be starting my own business and I need to figure out how to do that. And I really learned through obviously my own desire and vision, but Mm -hmm. through these big, companies that I just looked up to and thought, Hey, they're doing cool things and I respect them. So because I'm obsessed with the number 26, uh, for so many crazy reasons, um, I decided on my 26th birthday, no matter where I am in this world, I will be giving notice. Um, hopefully I have a job to give notice to. And, uh, and I did just I've that known you for so- four years and I don't know any of this. This is awesome. Maybe I need to wait till 26 years to get all this stuff. Or just have a podcast. Anyway, please continue. This is awesome. Yeah. So I was like working my way up really, really fast. Um, And so companies like Starbucks, Lululemon, Kiehl's. So that's L'Oreal Canada. Um, Mac Cosmetics was my final kick at an, you know, employment. So I, um, I applied randomly. So when I was 24, I applied randomly to cover a mat leave for a manager position for Mac cosmetics, zero makeup training, like clearly look at me right now. I maybe owned like a cover girl mascara. I know art, I paint, but I was like, Mac cosmetics is super cool. And like, it's pretty badass. Um, and it's very tight and clicky and I say clicky in a, in a good way. Like people work for them for 20 years plus and don't go anywhere. It's the best. It's the makeup authority of the world. So I'm like, I want to try this out. I applied and got the job at 24 years old. So I was managing like a million dollar counter store and had tons of staff under me and that was fun. And then uh, I got a permanent role at the Markville Mall at their location there because the mat leave was coming to an end. So I applied, got a a full-time gig. I was working there for six months, gave notice on my 26th birthday, opened my first store a month later. And here we are. Um, So that's kind of got me up to that. (laughs) Wow. So that's up to that. Um, But through all that, I really realized I love promoting and helping people figure things out. I love systems. I love, well, if Google can do it and if Etsy's killing it, like we can too. And creating that possibility for people to have a chance because I went through hell and back, wasted a lot of money, sacrificed my soul, lost relationships, like failed classes um, to kind of get to where I am and collapse all that time to ultimately achieve some great success. So building the Nooks has really been about implementing programs, resources, opportunity for people that really just can't do it alone. And the impact is we can all do it together. Pretty cool. Wow. That's pretty Pretty cool. cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I want to know more about that in a second. I do, but I want to ask you a few things anyway, before we get too far. So, at the beginning, so you're you're 17. Decide to move to Toronto from. Yeah, the Maritimes, New Brunswick. Okay, okay, so New Brunswick. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a bit of a move. Um, you got the city's got population of the area. Very very general. small, like the smallest province ever. Yep. Um, so. No, I think PEI I'm, does that. PEI. Super cute island. <laughs> um, True. I was born in Toronto, but I like my family and the whole thing moved right. out when I was very, very young. So I consider myself a Maritimer, but coming back to Toronto, obviously for the university dream right. and just to get the heck out of New Brunswick. So get out of small town, hit the big city kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how did you know? So you're 17, you're in the big city, you're going to 
um, it, it's a, you're going to art school, right? You, um, I, I don't know which, what university, U of T? I went to OCAD to start. Okay. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Thank so you. you're, you're, you're in arts, you're yeah. artistic. And from there you figure out somewhere that, you know, you want to work for nobody but you. Yeah. What I realized was I threw myself into all my, like I was working two, three jobs. Like I just need, right. I, it was driven by, I need money to do the things I want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had to you know take care of myself, but it really came to, I would throw myself fully into these companies, these businesses in retail. Right. And I would like, sh- you know, sign up for the extra customer appreciation events. I work seven days a week and pick up everyone's shift. I, I just, be so much involved and offer so many ideas. Like I was trying to tell Starbucks of like a new Frappuccino drink. And I was like, so annoying about it. They told me, Kate, just stop. Like you'll never get your Frappuccino drink created, like give it up. But I was so passionate about seeing opportunity and and, and bettering systems and thinking of things because I was so involved and obsessed with working and moving up quickly, making money and just gaining the experience. So yeah, I um, I realized though that I wasn't um, acknowledged the way that I wanted to be seen and recognized in really moving the mark or increasing sales or you know being more of an right. impact beyond my role. Right, right. Which I think is what a lot of people why they tend to you end up in positions I guess in life because you want to do something, you want to have a purpose, yeah. a reason. I mean, a pat on the back's nice, but you also like to be part of something that's moving and shaking exactly. and you can make some changes and make a difference. So I, I get I that part. It's still a little odd that 17, 18 to know yeah. that is, you know, yeah. I mean, I know it's business, unique. business kids, yeah. like the ones who go into business school, et cetera. They, they're why they're one of two breeds that are most seem to want to go big corporate. Mm-hmm. And then there's the ones who just want to get a foundation and they don't want to work for anybody except themselves. Mm-hmm. Most yeah. of the kids that I remember in arts or most friends that I've had going through arts don't typically that's not necessarily the mindset. Well, I don't think right. going into arts, I truly was funneled into art school because I was good at it. it right. You know, it wasn't my, it wasn't really my true calling or something that I identified as being an artist. I identified as, um, you know, a cheerleader, a, um, um, an agent, uh, a mentor, uh, just a passionate person that has ideas. So I think a lot of young adults, it's like, oh, you're really good at soccer. Let's try to get you a soccer scholarship. Even though it's like, well, I'm just good at soccer. That doesn't mean I like it. Mm -hmm. Um, I was just really good at painting and creative. So everyone's like, go to art school when it's like, no, maybe I should have started business school first. And so I actually went to business school. Um, So after I kind of dipsy doodled around OCAD and I was like, let's just, you know. I did it fun. Yeah, but it's time to move on. So not for me. Um, I moved, I went to George Brown for a bit and I went to U of T for a bit. So I just did like some certificate programs, Mm -hmm. but it was really at George Brown in their business entrepreneurship program where I like just felt so at home and seen and just recognized by my peers and my teachers as just, you know, someone that, that has an idea and Mm -hmm. is going to make it happen. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. Tell us about the nooks. Yeah. What's nooks? The nooks. Oh my goodness. So when I left my Mac job, I'm like, okay, everything I've been kind of dreaming up, thinking about, let's do it. So the nooks is a retail incubator. That's, I play around with a lot of different words to describe it, but essentially Mm -hmm. it is a turnkey solution for small shops to exist, thrive, grow, and really collapse the time to be successful. Um, And I say collapse the time because I'm, I'm moving the mark with different programs, resources, development, and doing kind of the scary stuff for them (laughs) and they can just participate and be a part of the ride. So we're a collection of stores that are like nooked out. So, you know, has space for artisans to set up shop. They, they do their thing with their merchandising, their products, and they make a hundred percent of the sale. So that's a key element in this. And when I was kind of talked about fair money, win-win situations, wholesale consignment, weird deals. It doesn't really work out for handmade. And I recognize that a lot just through my own creativity of making and doing stuff and also being in art school and also shopping handmade and kind of being like, how the heck are they making money? So it was through my own discovery of realizing we have to do a better retail revenue model. 
Um, but we also have to teach them how to make money and how to grow themselves. Mm-hmm. So if okay. I'm, uh, so if I if I make something, let's say I'm I'm incredibly good at making, um, I don't know, sculptures, right? Uh, that's ridiculous. But anyway, <laughs> how about um, you just get a crochet? And you can do really lovely toques, my, like my mom you know, lately. Like, One of my candles. most favorite toques uh, I got at, at one of Colleen's events and I wear it all the time. It's this ridiculous um, pilot's toque. I don't know if you remember it. Um, one of the ladies there. So so actually, she's a good example. She makes toques. So she knits for a living. No, she doesn't knit for a living. She knits as a hobby. And then she uh, she makes these wonderful toques. And the one that I got um, was a, a pilot's hat. So it's like the old, you know, bomber hat. It's brown. Right. And it's got the yeah. goggles that she knitted right into it. You know, so I love it. My kids cringe when I wear it everywhere. Just, I'm cringing for I them, love but it. that's okay. It's probably I cute love as hell. I but... love it. But, but so she makes hats for a living. So if, if that's her and she comes to you, what happens to her product? Like where does she go? Does it all work? Yeah. Yeah. So if you're a maker, so you move into your very own retail nook space within our store. So under, under our roof and you set up your nook shop um, Mm -hmm. and you take care of the look and feel the pricing, the merchandising, you know, you're setting up a store Mm -hmm. and then we take you through kind of our process of what (laughs) we believe or what I've designed to walk you through the retail steps to be successful. So you know, we get we get our new makers right on our 12 week checklist to success, which can be as simple as, oh, welcome week one. Use this promo graphic and this and this and this to promote yourself. Week two, submit your feature and your maker story. Week three, have you done this yet? Check here. Like we literally hold their hand and walk them through the process. Mm. Um, well, they, they lead themselves. We have a whole maker dashboard of resources. Mm-hmm. But they, they go through the system of, of starting to establish themselves in retail and we teach them and show them things that they should explore, the opportunity they now have to, to feel supported and safe to take these little micro risks to build their business. So you have a physical building space mm-hmm. that they would come. So like, I'm just picturing like pretend in a mall, if there wasn't the stores, but all the kiosks down the center, pretend that's it. So like, You've got X amount of kiosks, nooks yep. in a hundred by hundred space. I don't care what the space is, but that's yeah. sort of the idea. Now they, and they rent um, space from you and they man or woman or people, these nooks, and that's how yeah. they sell their goods. We actually take care of the full turnkey retail operation. So all they do is stock their nook. Um, participate in our programs. They we have our custom inventory system and payout, right. so everything's streamlined. Um, so they don't have to be we, there. No, we staff the store. Hmm. Think of it more like a hundred square feet of pop ups. Yeah, you know. So like, let me give you like a bad not, example. Not flea market, not flea market. No. Like there's a bunch of carts or anything, but more pop ups where the product is there, it's laid out the way they want it, and then they don't need to stay there, right? Like someone yeah. from the nooks mans the 100, 100 square foot so space. So it's similar to there's a place in Kensington Market. That blue I, banana. That's the only thing. Is the blue, blue something, blue banana you said? Yeah. Yeah, so there's, and if you, there's like artisan, there's artisans, there's there's mainstream stuff, but there's yeah. a lot of stuff. Like I mean, I've, I've bought jewelry for me later. There's like little things, like little cute silver things, et cetera, up the stairs there. You kind of go through the little, I don't yeah. Know, houses things or whatever it's pretty cute though but sort of that idea but all handmade craft not there's a lot of stuff in that place for example there, there's some cool shit but there's a lot of just like mainstream yeah. or sort of, it's mainstream yeah. it's not it's not there's nothing yeah. unique about it it's like anywhere but wide. what's so unique though and what like is the difference in you know even blue bananas doing it they're merchandising to look like that and about 90% of that store is now wholesale. I've, I have some core mm. vendors um, that are with me that have been longtime independent mm. vendors with Blue Banana. And they have, you know, they have a great operation. But what is so attractive is how they've merchandised the flow of their shop to look like that market vibe, which right. is so mm. interesting. And like every nook and cranny, every turn is something new. Right. 
a different vibe, a different energy, a different yeah. look, right? Interesting. So that's exactly what our stores are. So you walk in, there is a cohesive look and feel of the Nook brand. There's key little elements like our counter, our industrial lighting, small little right. stuff. Mm-hmm. But the perimeter of the shop is all different nooks, different booths, if you know, a, a better visual. But we take care of everything for them and they earn 100% of the sale. Um, so it's really cool because even though they're not there, and this is where the key is, like, not everyone can just walk away and be like, I'm going to make a living just off my knitted hats. And like, here we go. You can still do what you got to do your career, stay at home, mom, right. stay at home, whatever. And your monthly membership gets you a complete store operation and exposure. And you can manage your business with our smart systems like live time inventory. You get an email when you sell something, you can log in on your dashboard um, you see your ca- top categories. Like it's really thorough. It's like- so we, yeah, we've developed our own software um, to manage our world. I think Interesting. I think it's really because for new brands, like Kenny and I run into new brands all the time. Right? All they the make time. so many mistakes that the this kind of 12 week step allows them to learn, you know, critical things that they, they would just, they do they fail really hard at right um it's because they don't know and they just don't spend don't, the time right they're all happy the to learn it but but i'm 100 percent sure that they'd be happy to learn it another way than right uh, we always use her as an example but one day i promise i won't use her anymore but there's there's a there's a lady who makes um these wonderful uh paleo keto balls uh, yeah. but she she made these rookie mistakes and and, and printed like ten thousand you know, printed 10,000 packages before she was sure on packaging and things like, you know, like just very, like very, very expensive mistakes. I feel like uh, she probably doesn't necessarily fit in your program, but she would have learned a ton of stuff through your program as well. Right. Like it just, uh, well, yeah. Two parts to that. (laughs) One, what makes people give up in those rookie mistakes is these costly mistakes. Costly. They get so excited and passionate and they think, well, you know, if, um, you know, cover girl is printing 10,000, I need to, that's how I'm a business. And so that, that's usually what stops them from even progressing. Cause a, they financially can't, or they're just so discouraged mm-hmm. and defeated. Um, mm-hmm. and that kind of fogs their clarity. So the, and then they're very alone, you know, as you're an entrepreneur and you're hustling and you're doing so many things, you're like, you lose a lot of your relationships and your friends and your networks. And truthfully, they're usually not the greatest support system either if they're not on the same wavelength. So the beauty about the Nook community is you're a part of 350 other people that are very like-minded and want to support what we're all doing together. So it's it's a vault of ideas and guidance beyond just what the structure that we present and, and provide. There's so much learning just between the small shops. So what, what do you provide? So do you help them? So I come to you, so I'm Phil's toques, right? So I've come to you with my toques yeah. and I say, Hey, Colleen, I want to be part of the store. I, I want in, yeah. I want my own little nook. I want to, you know, I don't mind coming down a couple of days a week to sort of, uh, I don't know. Can I stand beside my stuff and talk to customers or do you guys not want me yeah. around? Do you want me to do this? So, to keep things kind of um, a bit. Well, you never know, eh? Phil laughing. Yeah. At me. We Maybe they don't want me around. We really I, don't because. Colleen, I'd ban him to... now. I wouldn't even. <laughs> just, I, I, don't I don't do think, anything. I don't even think you open this door because Kenny's going to show up tomorrow and go, I don't have well, anything. Listen, I don't have I made I don't some do stuff nothing. and you're going to be like, oh my God, what do I do now? <laughs> He's coming to the store. So, um, <laughs> my mom's like, making two because I'm going to get my mom to make them. It's not going to tell her I'm selling them. That's a good angle. <laughs> so, things like we offer um, Facebook paid partnership ad opportunities. So, cool. a lot of people are scared of doing the necessary things, which are very right. low cost and easy, yeah. but you know, Facebook ad manager account it's scary especially if you don't even have a business page so um we kind of have like this is a very like small example in our promo program um section on our dashboard there's paid partnership so what does that mean okay you submit this form what are you promoting what's the copy what's the vibe what's the action um and we will match your dollar up to a hundred dollars so if you are like i'm putting 50 bucks behind this ad 
we match your $50. Now, the call to action has to link you back to the nooks.ca where your online products and your shop lives because we, we give an online opportunity as well. Right. But we create it for you. So we're, you know, the, the tech behind it, but we'll, we'll match your dollars. But you're still because- partnering with them. Like you're still helping out. Exactly. Exactly. Um, we have things like uh, maker features. We have maker experience videos. So oh, maker features, like we write a blog about you and we put you on our website on the app. Um, we'll feature you on social media and link up to your store. The maker experience video, all of our makers um, create one at some point within their first three months. And we create a cute, a cute little QR code sign that goes into their Nook physical space. And, and, you know, it's branded maker experience, open your phone. And our staff use it a lot to prompt the customer to open their phone, scan, and then literally be t- spoken to by the maker. So a maker is encouraged, like, hey, welcome to my Nook. I'm Sherry. I'm the creator of blah, blah, blah. What inspired me is, so we're creating just cool tools for the for the vendor to use and to experience. Mm-hmm. And not all of them work for everybody, but at least right. we're being like, hey, try this. No, I, I think it's cool. I mean, most places, you know what they're going to do. They're going to put put you on the shelf and it's up to you. That's it. Survive, don't survive. Um, it doesn't matter to me. The next guy will be behind anyway. So you know yeah. I mean? that's the attitude of, of larger retail, whatever. It's it's hard, right? Like it's you, different. It's a different go, game. You know, I mean, you, you make stuff, you, you can do it this way or the, or the other way is you, you don't get into retail and you go to uh, farmer's markets, flea markets, which you, right now you can't do anyway, stuff, which you can't do. but but you, you also learn hard, right? Because those are yeah. not easy paths to follow. And quite honestly, if you want to actually get into retail, those are bad paths, right? Like how many brands, yeah. we see these brands where they're not margin ready. They're not, they don't. They're margin ready for the know. fair, Phil. Yeah, There's they 50 are. margin for they the are. fair. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, that yeah. doesn't work in retail. Yeah. But, but That's what the retail you're not going wants, anywhere. Not you're stuck you in farmer's markets for the exactly. rest of your product Done. life, right? So. And what's very yeah. sad yeah. about that and not having a proper sophisticated retail platform. And I'm not just like, hey, you're in a mall or on the hottest street mm-hmm. downtown Toronto. We actually mm-hmm. have proper systems. And I say this a lot. People are like, I just want a big retailer. I want Hudson Bay to buy my candles. Okay, cool. But a buyer's want to be like, what's your numbers? What's your top SKUs? You have no freaking idea. So exactly. when they come into our world, we're actually grooming them with data they can use, right. merchandising opportunity, real life things where it's like, yeah, you can walk in confidently with, you know, a catalog or the stats, mm-hmm. whatever you need. Right. Mm-hmm. Real life stuff. Talk. And they can talk the talk. And we, there's little things that we have, like our Nook Start program, um, but also like different programs that are to set them up to figure that out and know the answers. So if someone does ask them or the opportunity comes knocking, they understand this world. Mm-hmm. Um, and so packaging, merchandising, all this stuff where it's like when you're at a farmer's market, you're not tested. Mm-hmm. Um, you're not given a, like even more than eight hours to get real feedback. Um, so the whole farmer market pop up, I kind of like, thank God COVID's here to eliminate a lot of that and not to take away people's livelihoods, but to, to kind of force entrepreneurs, business owners, makers to do the real stuff, to be a little bit deeper and all in because they're very costly, which people don't realize. Right. Um, your time, your pack time. up. Your it's un- time is a big thing. It's time. Mm. An eight-hour oh show God. is eleven hours, twelve hours. No, but but and really, a lot. Prep, and, and really, it's a, you, it's a false flag, right? Like you, you really come out of it. Really? You come out of it thinking I've got something, and then, like honestly, I'm not. I like Kenny and I, and I'm sure you do too. Is we feel this so much because they come and they're like, I'm realizing my like dream. I made this thing, and you're going. That's great. You make 15% margin. So if you make for you, if you you're make margin. staying in, you're staying in farmer's market. Oh no, yeah. I want to go to Walmart. Sorry. No, you know, okay. Well, what if I go? No, sorry. No, you, you literally can't go anywhere else. Right. Because no. you, you know, you didn't take into account the driving, the eight hours you spent selling the product. Like you probably don't. Nothing. Your, your point is probably, probably wrong. Make, your retails like, are wrong. Just, yeah, the thing is, like, it's quick you're cash not equipped money. to do anything, you know? Like, because they just look at it the way you just said, yeah. you're calling. I worked eight yeah. hours. I did 500 yeah. bucks. I know this cost me 200. I made 300 bucks. I'm thinking, right. And you just paid yourself $4 an hour. Yeah. <laughs> right. You've got exactly. your guard. 
gas, the time, like all this other stuff you didn't account for. You didn't make anything. I know if you enjoyed it, I, I, that's awesome. Like if that's what you really yeah. like to do and you like the people and then I'm, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, do farmers markets all day, whatever makes you, but I think, you understand and I think with that mix, and this is what I try to really, well, I do tell my makers and, you know, they know this, if you're in my world, showing face is still very important. And yeah. And these markets and these pop-ups, but be selective and use them as a, as a, a part of your business where it is to put a face, where it right. is to give the freebie or the experience of you. Right. Um, but that has to be very curated and have an intent. And if the money isn't there at the end of the day, that's not the purpose of these shows. No, you did a marketing thing. You were just, you yeah. wanted to be exactly. seen. Whatever exactly. The second thing with the nooks and like, Oh, there's a lot of nook offs that are popping up. And when I say that stores that are like, I can rent a store for 1200 bucks, pack it with 50 vendors and I'm making five times my money. Awesome. And it ends there. And our direction and how I'm leading the nooks is I'm putting the stores in the best of the best for these handmade shops. I'm not putting you in a back alley corner or three flights up the stairs in an office building for the, you know, the doctors to shop you on their break. I'm giving you, the best of the best right. retail. Like we're in Gastown in Vancouver, right across from the spaghetti factory. Yeah. We're in Kitsilano. We're in Oshawa Center Mall. We're in Maple View Mall. We're adding Vaughn Mills to our roster come July. We're in downtown Port Hope. We're in downtown Kingston on Princess Street. Yeah, these we're are going where you gotta go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Times, and, and they're beautiful, by the way. I was on the website looking at VR. I was looking at the website too. I, we, we never prep, but before I went on, and I started looking at the, oh, this, this is actually like it's the one actually on Water it's pretty Street cool. In Vancouver is so... yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So but how many locations do you have? Me, me. Pardon? Sorry, how many locations do you have? Physical locations. Seven. So seven physical locations online because you know um, you're trying to. You're across the country, obviously. So you're a national yeah. retailer. Good for you. Yeah. Coast to coast, baby. So That's you do the that. Thing. And then, and how many, you said 300 vendors? We have 350 and then we're onboarding another 120 by the end of June. Okay. And so how, how, <laughs> like, how does, how does someone, how does someone get into your world? Because, you know, real estate is real estate. I mean, unless yeah. you're renting football fields, at 450, 425, you're yeah. getting, you're, you know, you're, yeah. you're, 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 you know, yeah. you're pushing walls, eh? Are, are you trying to stress yeah. her out or what are you, what are you doing? No, I'm just, I'm just asking because I'm curious. <laughs> to see what, well, I'm even curious to see what, so as a vendor, kidding, can I just man, pick I'm a kidding. city? Can I just yeah. pick a city to be in? Do I have to be in all? Um, yeah. How do I Great get question. vetted? And yes, smart ass, the buildings are only so big. You have walls. What's so, the building? Red the Hudson Bay, downtown Vancouver? The matter with you i asked I um <laughs> hey that building might be for sale when it's going to be a billion dollars yes. but that's a whole different story yeah. so it's such other thing so a couple of points to that what's awesome about you know national retailer when we opened our vancouver stores november was gas town kids Atlanta was march 19th of this year during covid we, yeah i've opened four stores during covid you opened in gas town <laughs> during covid yeah oh you got it's all working wow. out. So Shit. I mean, that's, that's nutsy, right? That's <laughs> really ballsy. I mean, I mean, of any place in the, okay. I should, so people don't know. I mean, there's a lot of Vancouver listeners. If you don't know that area of town is tourist driven, cruise mm -hmm. ship driven, not necessarily in the winter, obviously, but it's tourist driven. There is nobody in town right now. There's a pandemic but going on. Driving. I don't know if you've heard about that, Colleen. So it's this big thing <laughs> worldwide that a lot of retail is struggling and not opening up necessarily in the most tourist spots of a city. Holy yeah, that's not we're doing it. So, Colleen, I gotta tell you. So, the only oh. time I've seen him make that face, I I had another friend come on, um, and she opened a chocolate shop in Newfoundland. Oh, God bless her! Um, another one in in Trinity, Newfoundland, which has a, an entire population of fifty people, and he <laughs> he made that face. He was like, "What? Well, because I'm just trying to connect what? the dots. I'm, and then, I'm thinking." <laughs> You know, like you're in COVID, so you decide to go downtown Vancouver in the tourist area. I, yeah, I, 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 I struggle sometimes. I love it. I love, I love when people do shit like that because it's not stuff I would probably do. And I'm always so curious. How did you get to that? But why yeah. downtown? Yeah. 
Um, well, because we're in it for the long haul and real estate, um, because of COVID was a little bit cheaper. So we negotiated awesome. terms Good and I locked in a gorgeous spot that will have when we get out of COVID and beyond. And there's also layers to just, um, you know, it's not just selecting the best of the best and choosing, okay, let's take on this massive lease, but gas town and that high, high tourist traction that will come back. That's to expose us to the States. Yeah. Um, to just open us up a little bit more globally to the customer base coming through there. And again, it's no one else has what we have going on. So we are, we are the destination in Gastown. You Good know, you. we are, we are successful. So that kind of breeds an energy and a, an observation that people right. want to be a part of. Right. So beyond that, when, with, when we open new stores, it's really great because we have a momentum of automatically instantly. I always have 40 internal makers opening pretty much every store with me. Awesome. So, so continuity, which is kind of cool. Exactly. Nice. And anyone in our nook world can be in, in any one of our stores. Like I have vendors that are in all stores. Right. And they're a teacher, you know, and she's not doing this because it's more work. She's doing this because it's easy to scale with us. Right. It's easy to do business at a scale. She's doing it with the nooks. And that's just one. Like I pro I'd say about 40% of my vendors are in all my stores. Good for you. Good yeah. For you. It's, um, it just it's it also... works. Yeah, That's it's fabulous. also a really great experience because, again, it's something that small brands don't get is if I figure out how to sell locally, I get to a retailer who can can bring me across the country. I've got to learn whole different things about how I do things, how I price, how I think about well, you know, all of those things. To, and now you're giving them the chance to be around. able to do that, right? Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. Wow. And the thing is, too, our makers, when they lock in and commit to being a nookie, they don't have to look for other retailers because they trust the scale and impact that our, our vision is for them and our business. So there's a lot of loyalty in that and trust. And that's why like recruitment for us hasn't slowed down. And I say that because through the COVID, our, our model of doing business has really stood out because we're doing more and more business and helping more and more makers get in retail and be successful and not just retail, you know, we have our online and our mobile yeah. app, but makers do not have to think about this contract, those terms. Oh, are they going to repurchase? Like you control the show and you can be across Canada in as easy as like 24 hours. That's pretty remarkable, really. So how do you vet people? Like, how do you, like, I'm assuming you don't say yes to everybody who comes knocking. So right. what's, what's, what do you, what are you looking for? So I, um, two, I guess two parts of that. I have kind of four buckets when someone applies. So there's the immediate, yes, great. Here's your, we pick up the phone and talk. I talk to everyone who applies yes or no. And then they move forward in kind of their streamlined onboarding mm -hmm. process. And then they, they're touched along the line, my assistant or, you know, admin support. Mm -hmm. So there's that. The second person that comes to me, they got Instagram, but not Facebook. They don't have a website. They don't even know what that means. They've been handwriting all their tags, only done farmer's market. And I'm like, hmm, okay, you're good at an entry level. You want to be in four stores? No, let's start you in a full size nook in our top store. And you're going to enroll in nook start. Then there's the person that's like, I'm everywhere and you need me and I want to be in seven stores. And, you know, we're like, that's really cool, but no. And I say you have to grow into being a lot of stores with me. I don't just let you sign up for all of them because I know it's just an exciting impulse mm -hmm. and we want, we want to actually <laughs> groom them and help them make the right decision because just because we're in Vancouver, that doesn't mean people want your mala bracelets. And we know that. Yeah. What? Oh, valid. What yeah. Mean? And then there's Believe another, <laughs> there's another vendor where it's like, you know what, you got to exist and play online a bit. We got to get you an Instagram account. Right. You know, you got to do a show or two when we can, or do a pop-up with the nooks. And we, I direct those people to the $30 a month online membership, hmm. which gives them our world access to our resources, but it's 30 bucks a month. You exist online, you make full profit. And we kind of, you know, help you along there. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so cool. 
not now because we, we, we may have listeners who are actually have something and thinking, well, shit, I can do this. this I've, I've been looking for a way to go. So yeah. what, you know, I come to you and I'm in the first bu- bucket and it's, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. So what's this going to, what's this going to cost me? What, what, what am I, what am I looking at? Cause I definitely know what I'm looking at if I go do this by myself. For I know sure. That. So um, each store has a different membership, right? So let's say they want to be in Oshawa Center Mall in our standard size nook, which is three foot wide. So that's going to cost you $605 a month okay. plus tax. And you get everything for that set amount. And you so pay you that everything month. Means every, you, can, you get obviously the location. You're going to get You're help sorry. on. Bags, tissue, transaction fees, autumn, our, our, Software system. Someone's management. selling for me. I keep forgetting about that part too, right? Okay. Yeah, the staffing, the promotion, yeah. the community, the direct, um, the direct access to support, um, the proximity to me because I I designate my Thursdays to one on one calls with all my vendors. They just book fifteen minutes, and I speak to upwards of twenty people on every Thursday. Wow! And for the six hundred five bucks a month, that's what I get. No hidden shit, like. That's yeah. it. So That's I get it. full, I get in a retail store, someone's selling my shit, bagging it, ching, ching. I just waited home for the check to come in or e transfer. Well, no, you request your money when you want it. <laughs> <laughs> there's no, there's no payout periods. Okay. So you log into your little inventory yeah. dash, realize, like, oh, I did a thousand bucks on the weekend. I want $200 of that for Wednesday. So huh. Request drops in your bank account. Cool. That's interesting too. That I'm, you know, I'm I'm yeah. finding it. I don't know. Phil, Phil's doing this same math, math. I'm thinking the complexity for the for the vendor is limited. I'm thinking the complexity for you. I mean, now you're fine. You know, you know, you know. It's you know, it's almost like you're you're you know, you know, the Federal Reserve of the old old way when in the Canada we say you know, gold would back it. I needed X amount of gold to make sure I could cover yeah, yeah. cover yeah. the bills. That's that's an interesting place to put yourself into, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And we, then we um, withdraw their monthly membership fee. So I've, (laughs) when I started the Nooks and I had like wanted to do all of this, I wasn't in the position. So funny story about how our software came to be in 2007, I knew I wanted an app. So I started the process of researching and contacting agencies and developers on how to get an app. Well, it's going to be a hundred thousand dollars. So I just kept, the development and the idea brewing 2019 November I had a vendor a young guy applied to be in the nooks Toronto he did hairspray stuff we got talking on the phone December 4th we we finally had a phone call I'm like what's your story what's this all about your hairspray are you a hairdresser he's like no I'm just like a kid in university my hairdresser doesn't sell this stuff anymore. I want to make my own. I'm like, that's cool. So what do you do? I'm in computer um, software in Guelph University. I'm like, can you build me an Etsy? Because that was my, I'm like, I'm going to be the Canadian Etsy. That's what the Nooks is going to be. So I had like a document this big because I was already starting the process of building a franchise model, which needed an um, intellectual property, AKA yeah. software. Mm-hmm. And I said to him, I want an app. I want a full functional website like Etsy. I want this. I want to, I'm aspiring to do nothing. Let's make it happen. So we met on December 5th for a coffee in Liberty Village. This 23 year old kid, Adam, brought his computer with a mock up of possibility. <laughs> December 7th, we were signing. <laughs> December 7th, we were signing corporation papers. That afternoon, later December 7th, we were at the RBC signing a, a partnership for a bank account. COVID, then we got through Christmas, COVID hit, and his partner was out west. So he decided I got to get out there before they close up shop or close up the airports. So he went out west. I've only met Adam a total now as of um, November 2020, four times. And he's my business partner that has been leading with our developers, our custom software that I've been working on since 2017. Wow. And it just finished weeks ago, weeks ago. So what we've been doing in the meantime is Jimmy rigging different systems, Shopify, Mm -hmm. 
this, that to make our own. So our own is now complete. And we're actually just rolling it out now because lockdown gives us that time. And we now have a custom software, which now we can start selling our franchises. And here we are. <laughs> right? We just got to believe. I don't know what you say, right? I know. But I this know. is the thing. Being like wildly obsessed, maybe kind of crazy, but just the belief of my purpose and dreams are, are bigger than I can comprehend. And that's what I really try to install, instill, excuse me, with our makers. Everything is available to you in retail and beyond, but you have to start and you have to be open to trial and error. And we have the safety net for you for $605 a month. And some memberships are cheaper. Cheaper. <laughs> yeah. Right. You're on the wrong it's way, amazing. man. Yeah. Cheaper. Shit. It's amazing. Go uphill on Amazing. that one. You're offering a yeah. lot of stuff. There's a lot of, you got a lot of shit going on there. Yeah. Well, you know Phil was that. fun. It was fun meeting, like when Phil and I, I don't know if I sent the email or what happened. How about, or that thing was no kind idea. of weird. I yeah. have no idea. But Phil and I got connected because when I launched my business in 2016, I started writing a business program called Nookstar. And it's now like a full out course book that we've been using in our world cool yeah yeah cool, cool. um so we would host annual competitions which is like a dragon's den but with like homework right so phil was a judge and um and that's how we kind of got to know each other and then the whole idea with nook start was to bring in retail experts to help develop the program and you know kind of have some fun with good it for you man seriously i mean good for you yeah. Retail's retail's not fun and it's not it's retail can be fun, but it's not fun. It's a lot of work. There's a yeah. shitload of pitfalls. Most retailers are really not going to help you do much of anything. Um it's not it's no. it's, it's a tough gig. It's a tough gig. I know people but think it's easy to get an idea you make and oh I'm gonna go make millions. All right. It's so tough now, and retail don't need to shake up. So yeah. I had three I like years that. ago a general store because I'm like, where do the foodies go at the farmer's market in the winter time? The general store, <laughs> Phil, you know, I remember. You were there. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. yeah. So I've that closed when I closed the Toronto division of the nooks and chose to scale. Oh, you don't elsewhere. have that anymore. No. So in August I packed up all of Toronto cause I was pregnant. Like I had the four month old baby. Um, I packed up everything. I'm like, I gotta get the hell out of Toronto now. Thank God. Yeah. And I'm like, never again. So she had, a, I, she had a super cute store up in uh, Greek town, like the Greek town Greek area. Town? And then um, Greek town? like Bloor on the right. other side of the viaduct. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. But really oh. like. Wow. Yeah. Cute. So I started yeah. exploring artisan food makers like three years ago in the Nook's general store. So same mm -hmm. concept, but for artisan food. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Phil's been there. So when I closed Toronto, all that closed. But I'm now opening two general stores June 1st, one in Port Hope and one in Oshawa Center Mall. The Oshawa Center Mall is 5,000 square feet. All artisan food. So it's a boutique grocer operating under our rent-based model. It's a, it's a big space for it's this type of model. Cool. That's, that's a, that's, that's a nice size. It's beautiful. Good for you. So Good for you. where we're tapping in now is foodies, small produce, even not even, not even make like artisan food, small producers. Yeah. Right. They're yeah. also screwed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're we're going to help them out. It's amazing. We can't wait. Uh, I, we can't yeah, wait. I, like you're going to have to come back and tell us about how the general I'm dying store is to, well, Especially, you know, you're opening up 50,000 yeah. stores by the time the year's over. Yeah. I definitely want to have you back. And once I get out of my house, I'm just going to run down to Gastown. I want to take a peek at this. Jeez. I haven't yeah. left the house since last March. Yeah. So, you know, I've oh. been the during COVID months, like, with a four month year old, you're just opening stores. <laughs> well, you know what? We brands, should, like, you know, what's great is podcasts like this and like, um, you know, consultants like you guys retail has to change let's not keep trying oh, to no make choice. it something absolutely it has to so that's where the franchise opportunity 
Yeah. Like we started advertising um, our franchise opportunity three months ago and the interest has been unreal because, and I'm saying this as it's the opportunity. You can have your own retail store, have two other staff, you commit maybe 20 hours a week and you can make over six, fig- multiple six figures a year. Yeah. No brainer. Yeah. So the retail opportunity on the business side for business owners or whatever is huge. Okay. I don't know what you say. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I, so Phil, so we many, should do, oh we gosh. should run around the house, try to figure out if we actually are capable of doing anything. <laughs> nope. Not me. What I, do I, you I, see as like big mess ups for, you know, people that have a product? Like where are they going thinking that, Oh my God, I got to be on the shelf on Walmart or in Hudson's Bay. First thing most people do wrong is price costing it. Mm. They just have no clue what they're doing. They don't set enough room. They don't set room to make money. That's, that's well, fundamentally they, the first thing. They, they don't, well, they don't, they don't try and test their own notions of what good no. margin is. Right. I don't think like, they know Phil. You know, yeah. People say, if you double it, that's great. Yeah. That's double it. You know, double is typically what you're going to, that is your wholesale. You mm-hmm. double it again. That's yeah. sort of where your retail lies. And yeah. somewhere in the middle, you know, you have to make some money. It, it, I mean, I know it sounds, people don't realize, you know, a dollar product will retail for four. It's very tough yeah. to retail a dollar product at two in retail, unless it's you're doing environment. hundreds of millions of units, et cetera. And you've got that scale and velocity, but it's, it's, it's a, it's a tough gig retail. It really is. So to me, most people fall apart right there because after they, if they can't get the numbers, right, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be the greatest things in sliced bread. Who cares? There's no money in it. You can't, you can't yeah. do it. It just doesn't work unless you yeah. want to do it for charity reasons or, you, you don't care about the money, yeah. but most aren't driven that way. Right. I no, think, I think but- that's, that's the first one. I think the second one for me, <clears throat> I see a lot is um, like the packaging marketing stuff. Oh, that's an idea. You, yeah, you go to, you go to farmer's to. markets and it, it really doesn't matter how it's packaged. Yeah. Right. Like, because you're there to sell every package. And so what does well, it you're matter, selling? Right? It's not like, the packaging selling at that point. You're selling, and I don't. I think they forget right. that when you're in but a it's, store, it's, it's there's not zero uniform. distinguishment between Nothing. what those are. But the real retail game is you. You can't be there, right? No. Like you, you need to make packaging that sells itself, and that means it needs to look nice. It needs to. You it's have also to compliance, invest in that, which gets you back you to know. the cost, and then you've got to figure out. Like, how do I say things that like, right. I can chew up 15 minutes. Like I'm not paying myself anyway to be at the yeah. farmer's market. If I chew up 15 minutes to sell a product, what's the big deal? But you only have 30 seconds at shelf, right? Yeah, if you're, you have if that, you're online, you know you've got even less than that. Right. So it's like, yeah, you've yeah. got seconds. You know, you've got yeah. seconds. What's I think really we, we feel a lot of passion because we're we like this happens to us so many times. Like we 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 make this face because you you run into the brands and like within, mm-hmm. I, I'm sure you're like this right. Within the first five minutes, you know, no, uh, like sorry, I I can't help you right. Like <laughs> unless you unless mm-hmm. you're willing to redo the entire product. Like I, I just, told you, I used to do that as a buyer. I'd stop people. Yeah. I'd have them in tears in the office, not because I was yelling yeah. at them. I'd say you, you're you're gonna fail. You're gonna lose your house. Yeah. You're, you're not thinking because they don't, you know, honestly, because you get to, you know, because well, I wasn't a decent sized retailer, you get to that size. My buddy, you don't realize how much money I want out of you. Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. is a charity, man. This is, you know, yeah. you're, we're, we're leasing space. Like you're buying yeah. my building and yeah. for an indeterminate amount of time, it depends how good I feel on any given Sunday, how long you mm-hmm. stay. Right. And they don't really understand that, that, that idea. So to have someone, that's going mm-hmm. to get them into retail nationally um, at um, a ridiculously low price. Just yeah. spit it out. I mean, it's really low, which this is good on you, but I mean, there's so much room in that because mm-hmm. it cost me way more to get you a listing fee. Never mind, just didn't get an appointment that wouldn't cost, I couldn't get it for that cheap. So, but, right. to, and then to have programming to teach me things, retail doesn't do that. That's what retail should do. That's what retail should be. That's what a model of good retail. You're helping mm-hmm. them. They come in. They're loyal to you. They're going to do the right things. Their product's going to sell. Everybody's going to win. Consumer wins because they got a cool product that they wouldn't have gotten otherwise. Nobody loses exactly. in that one. There's, it's all and winners. On on the Nook's end, we, we have guaranteed income. 
So it, what, you know, well, we know our set, we know what we're making, you know, Absolutely. So we, we can have so much fun in doing all these things because I'm not, I'm not trying to sell a thousand candles. I'm trying to promote 300 amazing makers. Absolutely. And have so much fun a doing nice it. basket. Yeah. You know, where, where they can come in by 30 vendors at a time if they want. What do you care? I just want them different. to have a good Absolutely. Exactly. Enjoy the ride. Like, enjoy the trip. Good for you. It's I think really, the model's super cool. Yeah, it's a good time. And I, what you said about pricing is very true. It Obviously, it, it's the hiccup, I think, with everything. And what I know handmade, so if they're, you know, if a handmade artist, whatever, is listening, what they miss, because they just stick to the Googled formula, what they miss in their area of opportunity is perceived value. Exactly. Handmade is luxury. And we get, Absolutely. and they get caught up in this handmade is starving artists is yeah. not a, not a luxury product. Handmade is luxury. So there's a lot to play on there. So if you're, you know, if you're a maker listening, think of that in your formula and your pricing mix, because you have, you have the room um, or the, you know, the audience that believes and wants to buy and spend money. It's a different world. You know, the old Picasso story, Picasso's on the beach, guy comes up, mm -hmm. says, will you draw me a picture? And Picasso's sister and takes 15 minutes to draw a picture. And guy goes, well, what's, how much? A thousand bucks. Goes, like 15 minutes of work. He goes, no, it's been 45 years of, of work. I just can do it in 15 minutes now, a thousand yeah. bucks. Yeah. And that's exactly that's why I can open stores. And that's exactly why the momentum is not slowing down because not only did I do the obsessive figure it out work and put in my time, money and, and heart, it's all turnkey. And that's the point. <laughs> that's the point. No, it's, it's, it's not rocket science. You've done a uh, yeah. good on you. Very cool. Very cool that you're um, helping people out. It's a neat model. Yeah, it's we're changing retail. Bit, but that's okay. If on the people hood. want to find you, what's the best place to find you? Cool. So www.thenooks.ca. Um, on Instagram, it's The Nooks Canada. On Facebook, The Nooks Canada. And then if you want to download our app, um, Android, iOS, it's just The Nooks. The Nooks. you on LinkedIn. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> LinkedIn profile. Nah, go clean it up. That's the pressure. <laughs> well, what's your <laughs> link? How do you find? How do you find calling on LinkedIn, Phil? It's like so. Please don't go to LinkedIn. <laughs> like I have to figure out my passcode and break in there and go and clean, clean it up. up. Yeah. yeah, but thank you for checking that out and, and reminding me that I exist in that space. Very um, cool. This is fun. Thank you. Thank so you much. so much. Thanks really for coming really on. Fun. That was really interesting. Yeah. I, I, uh, yeah. You're a very interesting person. You got you got, <laughs> you got cool drive. Yeah, you really yeah. do. I mean, it's just amazing. I, I mean, just I, I I I love I love stories like this. I do. I just think they're cool. I think just I fascinating. It. Good on you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we're having you thank back you after so Christmas. We want to know how the how the year went. Yeah. Storm yeah. nine hundred and seventy two by December. Um, but shoot us a note, like so when you open up um shoot us a note and we'll we'll repost on oh, we can share it even on uh, personal social, stuff like just to amplify, my share my, right because i think even whatever think, yeah 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 because ah. i think opening you know when we open everyone will need some encouragement to Absolutely. realize where to go while they're running crazy yeah, so sure. um shoot us a note and we'll we'll make yeah. sure we promote it thank you so well. much well the mall yeah we have two mall openings um june 1st so the mall has been outstanding for handmade it's it's not a scary space it's it's the space to be truly so. And if you are looking to open your own store, negotiate those leases now. So that's yeah. Again, that's why you need to be on LinkedIn and, and yeah. get cleaned up because that's where a lot of people are going. <laughs> they're, looking, they're looking for people like you. Ah, cool. They got me. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great night. Thanks, Colleen. Thank you very much. Have a great we'll night. Chat with you later. I hope. Yeah. Bye. Take care. Yes. Bye. Bye. Hey, Mr. Chang, you stay on for a second. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You do you have time, or you you gotta I've go? I've got literally gotta run a couple away? seconds. I want to go put dinner okay. in the oven. Yep. Um, because I'm on a five thirty call, and then I'm back on with you at six thirty. Yeah. So. Sorry, booked us I twice. Apologize. Today. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. I like talking to you. Talk to you enough today. So talk to you enough this month. Yeah. It's Murphy, it's like only yeah. six. I've like a rolling month. Holy jeez. Actually, no. Just in the month of May, I feel like I've talked to you a lot. I think I've talked to you every day. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. a lot. It's a lot. That's, that's a lot. okay. <laughs> that's all good. Okay. I'm running downstairs. I'm going to go get yeah. dinner going on. I talked to you an hour and a half. I'll see you. Yeah. I'll see you later. Sounds 90 good. minutes, I think. Yeah. Sounds good, buddy. Okay. okay. Ciao. Ciao. Bye.